Yeah. All right, we're back with another episode. Got Kavika on today. How you been? Been good, man. Just hanging out, you know, living oh, yeah. life. Oh, yeah. Let's bring it up just a tiny bit. All oh, right there. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Something like that. So uh, you recently had a baby. How's how's that going? Dude, it's going great. Um, she just turned five months like about a week ago. And I mean, it's hard, but it's also like 100% worth it, you know? Oh, yeah. Like the good definitely outweighs the bad for sure. Oh, for sure. And like I've talked about it a little bit on other episodes, but like the bad is like, I don't know about you, but like a little like depressed and stuff like not about the baby or anything, but like I'm like, I want to provide so much for this little kid, you know? And it's like, yeah. especially like we were kind of talking like the price of everything's crazy right now. Oh, yeah, dude. No, definitely. There's always this, I don't know, like getting married is one thing. It's like you and your wife. I mean, you guys learned, you guys kind of learned how to do it on your own. And so it's like uh -huh. you guys just meshing those areas. It's like, it's easier. Uh -huh. But then once you bring this whole new being, it's like, geez, like you literally got to teach them from the ground up mm -hmm. everything that they know. And provide everything, you know, like uh -huh. doctor bills, food, clothes, everything. And so, I mean, yeah, like you said, prices are going crazy over here. Spending 35 bucks for <laughs> a week's worth of food, you know. Yeah. So, but I mean, like I said, the, the, the good out, definitely outweighs the bad. Oh, for sure. And it's kind of crazy. The prices of stuff going up in Utah. Like I went to the store the other day and bought four things and it was like 50 bucks. And I was like, oh, <sighs> <laughs> I didn't know I was living in California. Dude, Walmart is jipping us, man. Dude, for real. But uh, what's one of the biggest hurdles you've learned as being like a new father as of late? Um, I think, honestly, just just knowing where I fit in to like uh -huh. the whole, to my role, you know? Because uh -huh. it's like, at the beginning, there's only so much you can really do as, as the father, you know? Like... The mo mother, she feeds her. The baby's, like, already attached to her. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I don't know how it is for you, but our baby, she will not go to sleep with me. <laughs> oh, really? Like, I can try and put her down for naps here and there. Uh -huh. And sometimes she'll like me, but at night she knows it's go time with mom. It's not, <laughs> there's no nothing with me. So, I don't know, just inserting myself in certain areas where uh, I can be useful. That's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. That's, like... That's one of the toughest things we're going through is like recently had like a little schedule change and stuff. And I used to put Ezra down for bed every night and now he's having to be put down by um, Drew every night. And so he's hating it yeah. right now. But so it's just kind of funny, like all the little things that you don't think matters to him and they've already picked up on. And uh -huh. like, like you said, eating times and like sleep schedules and stuff like I think that's one of the biggest thing is finding a sleep schedule that works for yeah the house. But how do you guys kind of have it right now? So we kind of have it like it's kind of tough. We try and put them down around like eight, eight, nine o'clock. But there's <laughs> <laughs> it's a key word on trying because some days he does not want to go to bed. And, that eight to twelve window right there. Yeah, for real. Because like you're like, oh, we're gonna get him to bed, put him in his crib and everything, and you put him down and he's right back up and mm -hmm. that's one of the hardest things we'll we're trying to like get him to sleep on his in his own crib lately we've kind of been bad and been having him sleep in our bed oh yeah <laughs> but um yeah i don't know that's that's tough i don't know how people sleep train it's hard man it's definitely hard how do you guys do it so we so my wife will try and rock her to bed usually around like nine to nine thirty uh-huh because before she would like, we had it to where she was going to bed at like 11, 1130. Uh -huh. And she would sleep through the night to like nine. And we're like, sweet, dude, we'll just do this every time. Uh -huh. But then as like you get on and get going, and it's like, well, it hits 11. And then we have no time for each other. Uh huh. And so it's like, frick, let's try and get her on a better schedule. And pretty soon, like she's, we're going to want her to be going to bed at eight or nine. Uh huh. And so it's like, just kind of bite the bullet and hope for the best. So we're trying to switch it up right now and it's, it's been working slowly. Oh yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's what we've kind of been doing. And like, that's one thing I didn't know is like sleep regression is such a big thing. Like soon as they hit a certain age, they just don't want to sleep or like wake up throughout the night. And mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but 
<laughs> it's it's tough. The little crackheads, man. That's what it is. Yeah, for real. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, and did like sometimes they wake up at like three in the morning, ready to party. Like they're like, I am fully awake and nothing is stopping me. Like I'm ready to play. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We haven't had that problem with ours just because she loves her sleep. Uh huh. Our thing is with her, it's like she's ready to party throughout the whole day. So she'll take like 10, 15 minute naps. Oh, shoot. <laughs> so, and then she'll be right back up, like ready to go and screaming. And she's got a little attitude already. Really? Know? Like her, it's crazy how they develop this personality so fast. Damn. But yeah, so that's our issue. So she loves sleeping at night, but miss her with a nap. <laughs> yeah. Naps are, naps are pretty, pretty important, I think. Oh, yeah. That's uh, my time to like chill and that's when I fit in my nap. <laughs> but um, yeah, like when he takes like a 20 minute nap, I'm like, oh, dude, come on. <laughs> like I was not ready for this. Yeah. But that's one thing like I wasn't ready for as a parent is or like even as like an adult, because I feel like me and like you, we, we've have we're having kids pretty early on in life. Yeah. For sure. And so it's like, damn, I still haven't even like grown up. So I'm growing up with the child and like. Yeah my wife and we're like still growing up and then growing up with him and like everything's changing at once. And it's, it's a cool experience. And, uh, I saw a thing. It's like, man, you you always have a certain love for your first kid mm -hmm. because you grew up and like they were there through your growing up as well. hundred percent. Are you, so are you the oldest in your, yeah, See, like, you know how it is. Like you feel like you've gone through mm -hmm. all the rough parts with your family and all your younger siblings just had it easy, you know, like, uh -huh. oh, you don't know how this was, you know, back then when we had nothing, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I feel like it's the same way as a parent. Like you can kind of just see the progression. Yeah. You're seeing like the other side of things, right? you know, because like you're hard on your parents and you're like, oh yeah, like how could you, how could you do that or whatever? But now as a parent, it's like, oh wow. Like they're really just learning through it too, you know? Right. Yeah. Especially uh, some of those high school phases and stuff like, <laughs> I'm not ready for that. Like, that's going to be wild, yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, how uh, how is it being like a girl dad? Are you ex like. Dude, it's, it's fun, you know, like, obviously, I mean, I wanted a boy, but I don't know. I just feel like there's this, this, a, a different kind of love, you know, for my, for my girl already overprotective. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, I mean, it's fun. Like I'm, I'm excited to. I don't know, be a protector for her and just kind of be an example of what she should want in a man for the future. Oh, for and sure. So, I mean, it's definitely like just leveling up, you know, Yeah. like giving me that push to do better and be a better person. So that's kind of how I felt. Dude, for real. Like that was a big thing for me when I found out Drew was pregnant with Ezra. I was like, I got to be so much better. And like, it's not like I was even in a bad spot or like anything, but I was like, I need to like strive to be better. Like, I feel like I wasn't where I should be right? to be having a kid. So mm -hmm. like getting your mental, right. Your like body, like right. And everything. And like kind of just pushing your goals on every front. Yeah. I don't know if that's how it was for you. But. No, definitely. It's like, I don't know. I feel like just growing up, I always had this preconceived notion. It's like, all right, I'm going to be, like this i'm have everything together <laughs> once i have a kid we've been making dough have a big old house and everything's gonna be set uh-huh and then very rarely does that happen for everybody even if you have all those things it's like it's such a 180 360 twist uh -huh. where it's like you're never gonna be 100 percent ready so it's like i don't know a little give and take yeah for sure and like i feel like it's kind of hard for like parents that like you need the dual income because like mm -hmm one needs to stay home and then like how how is that for you guys you and your wife so our my wife she works from home which has been like a real great blessing for us she got like a gig with an airline oh that's and awesome so she's been able to do all her stuff remote and i mean it's not ideal at the moment but i mean it helps pay for stuff while we're just figuring things out oh for sure but yeah i hope i can land a job to where it's like she doesn't have to work or if she, she can have the flexibility to be like, if she wants to work, she'll uh -huh. work, you know? Yeah. But I don't know. What, what field are you going into? I knew you're, I know you're going to school at the BYU. Mm -hmm. What, uh, what kind of field were you going so, into? Um, yeah, I, I just graduated this last December 
um, in construction management. Congrats, dude. Industry. That's that's awesome. I appreciate it, dude. Yeah, it was it was a grind. Man. It was a grind. <laughs> I bet. I heard BYU is pretty damn tough. <sighs> yeah, dude, and especially like as student athletes, I don't know. We would like we would get guys that transferred in from other schools, and they'd be like, "Do you guys actually do your homework?" <laughs> like well yeah what do you guys do like oh we we had tutors we had this and that they were doing everything for them i'm like you guys got to be kidding me bro <laughs> like my first semester there dude oh my gosh i was like what even is this it's like and i had two classes uh-huh and I'm, i was like drowning in homework i'm like are you guys serious like this is how the rest of my career is gonna be but uh-huh I don't know. You finally meet people. I think that was the biggest thing that helped me. It was just meeting a bunch of people that could help me mm -hmm. and just learning all my resources. But yeah. Sorry, what was your question? Oh, um, like, I guess like what field you're going into and like how BYU kind of was with that. Yeah. So I graduated construction management. Um, yeah. And currently I'm just looking for a job. Um, I've been doing a little like part-time internship kind of with a, uh, SWIP company. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Uh-uh. What do they do? So they kind of, um, they do like site inspections. So for like storm water, concrete washouts, stuff like that. Uh-huh. And so I just go site to site, just have this kind of checklist, mark things off, and then just have conversations with site supers and stuff. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. What kind of construction, because there's so many different construction industries, I guess, so to say, or like, yeah different fields in that industry what what kind of one do you want to get into so i've been looking more into like the commercial side of things so uh -huh. like be, building those like big buildings warehouses stuff like that um but yeah like you said there's like residential stuff like i thought that would interest me more just because i think like who doesn't want to build their dream house one day and yeah for real know? so i mean eventually i think that'll happen but I don't know. It's just like you said, the market, man, like residential's on a boom right now, but when it tanks, it tanks hard, dude. Yeah. I feel like construct commercial, you see more of a consistent flow, Uh huh. especially with keeping a job. So I think that's why I've leaned more commercial. That's cool. Especially with like everybody needs schools. Everybody needs warehouses, like stuff still has to happen in right. the global market, you know? Right. So right. That's, that's pretty cool. And no matter what, if the government wants a building, they're going to get that built. So oh, yeah government state like i don't know like it's pretty crazy but uh if anybody doesn't know this dude was a student athlete at byu this dude was freaking insane how was how's being a student athlete it is uh it's a full-time job i'll tell you that and i mean i'm i mean i'm so i'm happy for everyone now with all the nil stuff i uh -huh. i had like a year of that oh which that's was nice like Dude, NIL makes such a big difference, bro. Really? Yeah, because if you think about it, like, those guys that are on scholarship are getting, what, maybe a grand a month uh -huh. to live, to pay off everything and still have food and stuff. Yeah. So it's like, and and if you want to be good and play, uh huh, you got to be putting at least, like, 12 hours a day, like, a full-time job every God. day, and you're getting, like, below minimum wage yeah to perfect your craft to and perfect, then yes and so like i don't know i think this whole segue i don't know just being in it like yeah dude all yeah. these athletes get all your money man get your bag because who knows you know mm -hmm. i mean there's guys out there that are you know just struggling to make it yeah. they came from nothing and so this is like their their only way oh yeah and like there's so many collegiate athletes out there that won't make it to the next level right you know so it's like they're still putting their bodies on the line and like some some of them the ultimate sacrifice and take those hits and everything so like why not get their like get their money you know oh yeah yeah and it's a brutal sport man even just that jump from high school to college man like those hits <laughs> they add up, dude <laughs> I, i'm telling you they add up my body's felt better than ever since it's been over so oh, yeah i was gonna ask you that how was the jump from like high school ball to college ball was it a pretty big shock and like how were the workouts different uh, and stuff so i'd say i'd say it's more it's more organized in college you mm -hmm. know like you have 
certain amount of increments for this or that and it's more like detail oriented okay and as far as like conditioning and stuff i'd say off se- off season college sucks really yes <laughs> like i can remember when i first got there dude i first got there met the strength staff uh-huh. and i was like all right like we're gonna he's gonna teach me how to lift or whatever he said nope go outside we go outside on this turf field and there's just a 45 pound a 45 plate <laughs> he's like you're gonna push this a thousand yards today <laughs> holy shit <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> okay i i and he's like just let me and then he went back inside just let me know when you're done <laughs> <laughs> and so i kid you not i was out there for two hours pushing the sled back and forth back and forth until i hit 100 and i don't know if i saw pictures but like i had white tights on they were all ripped up my knees were bloodied like oh my gosh yeah yeah so that was my welcome to college moment right there but and then i had to do that for seven days straight Mm-hmm. That was like my kind of initiation before I even touched like a weight in the weight room. Dang, that's crazy. And so, yeah, but I mean, from then on, it was like, all right, this is serious. Like, uh huh, it's go time. And so, I mean, we had all kinds of stuff like pushing prowlers 75 yards, Damn. um, running stadiums in the summer with weight vests on, like. Especially at BYU, that stadium is steep. Oh, yeah. And you can't even <laughs> breathe up there, man. For real. Yeah, breathing through a straw. But no, I mean, definitely helped you like mentally. Yeah. And like you definitely saw results for sure. Oh, I bet. Did they have like a specific like workout regimen based on what position you're playing and like dietitians and stuff for you? Yeah. So that's another thing is like they, they, feed, they feed you like crazy. So I went in. As like, uh, they wanted me to play corner. Closer. Yeah, they wanted me to play corner. And so I went in at like 170. Uh huh. And they're like, this isn't going to cut it. Like, we want you to get gain weight. And so, like, they had chicken. After every workout, they had core powers. Just a big old fridge of core powers that Dang. said football only. <laughs> and like, I was drinking that like water, dude. Dang. And I mean, they had this whole nutrition station where they had like, you can make these big old shakes with granola, peanut butter, banana, everything you can imagine, you know? Damn. And so it's like, yeah, you're putting in all this work, but like you're getting fed. Yeah. You're also getting the rewards of making it to that level, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And our dietitian, he had like this whole closet full of just supplements, like creatine, whatever you needed. Dang. If you could take these big old powders home so like you could make a shake before you go to bed and so i mean that stuff was was definitely awesome and i mean i went from 170 by my last year i was 235 oh shit that's a big jump 60 pounds man Holy. yeah yeah Damn. but i mean could you feel the weight or like were you still as quick oh yeah i mean at 235 i felt the weight for sure i was definitely like strongest i'd ever been but like Definitely not as fast. Damn. I like I felt my most explosive and fast when I was like two twelve. Really? That was like my good weight. Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So, uh, what was your bench up to, dude? I'm not a bencher, man. That's like my weakest thing. But I think I hit three thirty five was my the most I've Damn, ever. Damn, that's huge. It's uh, no, dude. There, like once you get up there, you see like you're just another dude like Uh everyone was their best the best at their high school you know Uh uh-huh and so i mean we got guys over there just pushing 500 pounds with ease like especially at that level though yeah and like that's a crazy that's a crazy thing is like 315 is so like top what like 0.5 percent of the population you know yeah but then like once you get into that population and you're around those people you're like there's so much more to do. <laughs> like, oh yeah, dude, for sure. What was your best lift? Uh, squat by far, dude. Like, I don't know what it was, but I just had in my head, I'm like, every time I would max, it's just like, dude, all you're doing is you just gotta stand up. Uh huh. So I would just tell my that just stand up, and I don't. I want to say I hit like five. 505 or something (laughs) yeah no it was it was a big number dude but yeah i'd say squat i'd say squat then power clean then 
uh, bench. That's awesome. Yeah. Damn, dude. What was – that's one thing. What was the, like, mentality like in the locker room and, like, in the gym, I guess? Like, I just watched that Florida documentary and it, like mm-hmm. – did you have that one dude in the locker room that changed the mentality when he walked in, I guess? Um, I don't know. I think I think it was just all of us collectively. It's it's crazy when you watch documentaries and like you hear guys from other schools come in mm-hmm. because like yeah, it's competitive at BYU, but it's more like family oriented oriented. Uh-huh. So it's like everybody is doing it because they love each other and like they want everybody else to do better. So it's not really like, I don't know, you don't really get those guys that are just kind of like pricks. Uh huh. And so I think in the locker room, like we were all, everyone was homies with everybody. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I miss the most, honestly, is just that locker room. Like, and like everyone's competitive. Uh huh. But it's like, it's like a cool competitive where it's like, doesn't get too serious, you know? Yeah. Like you're pushing each each other for like the betterment of each other not i'm gonna be better than this guy and push this guy down i'm gonna take his spot Uh yeah it's like we all had the understanding like the best is gonna play yeah and like you you just try and fit where you fit and just do your role and continue to get progress see i think that's the best thing to like to be in that mental space be like okay we're all gonna try our best and the best is gonna make it on not Mm -hmm. like i'm gonna find a way to knock this guy off to get on right if i guess i don't know i bet there's a better way to say that but no no definitely for sure you know especially as a team and i kind of talked about that in one of the last ones it's like i definitely didn't get the the college like camaraderie of a football Mm -hmm. team but like i had that like my whole life growing up and stuff and it's like once you get out into the the real world you know and like into job spaces and stuff everybody's stabbing each other in the back for like pennies you know yeah and it's like it's hard to find that camaraderie and that like brotherhood so to say you know yeah i think that's why i kind of gravitated towards the construction industry you know because Uh i mean you guys have to work as a team to get this project done Mm -hmm. so it's like you can stab each other in the back and but that's gonna hurt all of you guys in all your production at the end so it's like it's either do that or you guys work together and you succeed at the project and then everyone you know gets a raise yeah i don't know that's just how I see it. Yeah, that's that's how it should be. Yeah. And, like, that's the one thing I've noticed is it, it's so tough to find that. And I don't know. That's why I, like, I try and, like, reconnect with people. Like, try and get – go to the gym with people as much as I can or, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Just you got to find that outside of – or find that somewhere in your life, I think. Oh, yeah, for sure. Especially being, like, a new parent. Like, it's hard to get away sometimes. Dude, it is, man. The gym is the – is their meditation place oh yeah helps me keep me sane oh yeah for sure but uh i see you there with your brother all the time how's he doing he's good he's getting ready to graduate um i think i mean last i heard he's going to the u and so damn he's just gonna go i don't think he's gonna try and play this next year but he's just gonna try and train get bigger and then hopefully try and walk on for next year so that's cool we'll see how he does but i mean I just try and give him as many tips as I can and just tell him how it really is, you know, not yeah. sugar, sugarcoat anything. Yeah. And so we'll see. You got him on your training regimen you were on? A little bit, yeah. I try, I mean, I mean, yeah. Some of the stuff that we do, I definitely have shown him. Or like just little technique tweaks here and there that can like up his weight. Uh-huh. And so, yeah, I've been trying to just give him little, little nuggets here and there. That's cool. That's cool. Um, what's what's one of the things you're excited for as being a new parent? Hmm, one of the things. I don't know. I I think. I Bro- think each step. I don't know. Each step kind of excites me for different different reasons. Like right now, I'm excited for when. She can just talk and say my name. Mm -hmm. But as I look towards the future, like I'm just excited to know them as a person and know who they're going to be and what's going to make them tick or what's going to make them happy. And, you know, what are they going to like to eat? You know, stuff like that. Uh I'm just excited to see like what type of person she'll turn out to be. That's pretty cool. Yeah. How many do you guys want? 
one right now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I think we've kind of talked about three to four. That's there you kind go. of like our our area, but we'll see, man. That's kind of where we're at. I'm like, my wife's like, why do I want to be pregnant again? I'm like, yeah. in a way, yeah, I love the new baby, but I'm like, damn, that's crazy. Let's wait a little bit, you know? Yeah. Like we were talking about that a little bit today. I was like, let's let's try and get set up a little bit and like plan the second one a little mm -hmm. bit better mm -hmm. for sure. How was that whole uh, journey for you guys? Like just with pregnancy, like? It was pretty rough for her. She was pretty sick the whole time. Yeah. And like, I feel like that was tough on her. Tough on me because it's like, I don't know what to do. I don't you know how to help. Do what do you do? You uh -huh. can't do nothing. It's not like you can take the pain away. Like, uh -huh. You can only grab so many pillows and make them comfortable. <laughs> For real. <laughs> so. Ask how, what they want to eat so much, you know? Yeah. but Damn. How was it for you? Um, For us, so it was like she was throwing up a lot at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I don't know what to do. Like try and feed you something you throw it right up um you know drink some water i guess <laughs> but i think towards the middle like it like she hit a good spot where she was like doing all right and then towards the end it's just like she's just uncomfortable uh -huh. and you just like just ready to get the baby out oh yeah and so i think it was pretty from what i hear it's pretty normal symptoms but i mean it's tough like for like i uh, kudos to women bro like Dude, they, they got it they got it tough man i couldn't put my body through that so for real and then all the challenges and hurdles they go through after having the baby and like yeah dude mentally physically i'm like i don't know how y'all do it and yeah. want to do it again <laughs> seriously i think i saw this thing online it was something like after like a woman a woman has like their first child they should be able to just retire and get paid by the government for the rest of their lives i'm like dude that's so true dude for real like they're literally bringing life onto this earth and you know they go go through way more stuff so it's like just let them be you know yeah for real i don't know i feel that and it's like you want to help them as much as you can but then you're I, I don't know it's it's pretty tough and like even now when he's six months old it's like you're still kind of dealing with some of that stuff like you got to go to work and it's like, damn, I wish I could just spend time with you guys, like help you out throughout the night or throughout the day. And like, I don't know, that stuff's tough. And then like getting back to who you were and who you are, like trying to find like the job field and careers you want to go into. And like, cause especially with construction, some of those hours are pretty crazy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's just all about adjusting, adapting to kind of what comes next, but also, I think something I learned is just like being in the moment too. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a struggle right now, but like fast forward 20 years now later, you know, it's like, you're going to look back and be like, man, I wish I really enjoyed instead mm -hmm. of worried so much, just be in the moment, you know? Yeah. And so it's just finding that balance. I feel like is the biggest thing for real. I've been, I've been trying to like think more like that, like just be in the moment yeah. and like, it's helped a lot throughout like i was doing this before I even found out she was pregnant like yeah. i was thinking about that before and like oh yeah like money's tight but like i'm just enjoying the moment like where i'm at and whatever but like i find myself like my wife has to still remind me that i guess yeah i'm like oh yeah i can't wait till he says dad dad or like i can't <laughs> wait till he's like crawling right. around she's like just enjoy the stage that he's at now and like yeah and i don't know no so. that's the same here bro same here yeah but um, what was I going to ask you? I was going to ask you something, but we'll, I'll, it'll come back to me. Yeah. Totally. But uh, how was oh yeah, how was it um, going to college? Because I know you guys, she got pregnant, but you're still going to school. Mm -hmm. How was that journey? And like, were you still living on campus? Were you living back here? With, like, how was that? Yeah, so that, that whole time was kind of crazy. It's crazy you asked that, but... Um, so at that time, it was probably like January of last year. And I had just gotten off of my second injury. And so it was like just a whole lot of changes were happening in the locker room. And like a lot of coaches had gotten fired. Like my the guy who recruited me and my position coach, who I really loved, like both uh -huh. had gotten fired. So it was like had to make a decision on, you know, my future with playing football. Mm hmm whether I continue to play and then like I have to go to school for like an extra semester mm -hmm. or if I just cut it now and then 
just finish out my semester yeah. in the next year. And then I guess the answer kind of came and well, your wife's pregnant. So it's like, <laughs> you know, I got to get my, it was just like that realization, like you, you got to get it together. Like, yeah, it's now or never. So obviously like my career got cut short. I just medically retired and then, yeah, we just prepared for the baby. I got an internship, was working and just finished out December, you know, getting my degree. But I mean, once we found out um, all this, I guess our comp, we were living out in Provo oh, nice. and our complex, something had happened, but our complex was having other people look at our place and basically saying like, we're done. At What the I heck? If, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember if it was June or July one of those months but like pretty much we were done uh-huh and so like we just had to find a place and so we ended up moving out here with in-laws and that whole last semester i was traveling oh all the way out to up, provo every um, day every day man <laughs> traveling up there working and then we travel back and i actually helped the high school coach too damn so like i was it was busy but like i don't know i i like busy i, I, I like stuff to do you know? i need busy yeah so i i like i don't know I feel like I grew a lot and was definitely super tired, but I don't know. It was, it was fun. Yeah. So that's kind of, to answer your question, that's kind of how it all went down. Damn. That's crazy. Yeah. That's a long drive too. Dude. I, I still do it though. Oh, I you... still do it like once or twice a week just cause I do sites out there in mm -hmm. Utah County. But so, I mean, I just accepted that everything is far from Stansbury. And just, oh yeah. Just put on a podcast and just freaking <laughs> zone out. Drive away. Yeah. What podcast do you like to listen to? I. What's your go-to? I trans. I transitioned for from a couple. Like I listen to the. I don't know if you heard of like the New Heights one. Uh huh. Like, Travis and Jason Kelsey. So I listen to that one, and then I listen to like Shannon Sharp has one, like a nightcap one. I'll listen to that. That's a good one. And then. I listen to like Theo Vaughn every now and then. <laughs> His is always good. I don't know. It just depends on my mood. It's it it's it's crazy. I've been. I think I recently started listening to a little bit of of Andrew Schultz. I think. Oh, flagrant. Yes. Yeah, that one's yes. funny as hell. That's yes. one of my main ones I like to listen to. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. You heard the one with. I just listened to the one with like Jason Williams, the basketball player, the other day. Oh, I haven't listened to that one yet. That's one I've been wanting to listen to. Yeah, but I mean. I don't know. It's just, it's crazy that how many podcasts are really out there. You know? Uh huh. Like I, I find myself wanting to just listen to a podcast more than music sometimes. Oh, I do too. Sometimes in the gym, like I'm like, damn, am I really about to listen to a podcast right now? <laughs> but you're benching and the dude homeboys just talking about politics and you're just over here dying <laughs> for dude. real, putting up your max and they're like, so in the political spectrum of today's world, <laughs> yeah, bro, that's crazy. I'm like. I don't know, like doing my podcast, it's funny because like I, I love podcasts so much and listen to them. It's like you find yourself trying to like, I don't know, trying to mimic some of theirs a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just, it's kind of a cool experience. And like you kind of appreciate podcasts more when you try and do them. Oh yeah, definitely. Like especially Flagrant. I don't know if you've seen it, but they have like the whole set and everything. And like yeah. obviously he's a famous comedian and stuff, but that's pretty cool. Yeah. And they just have, I don't know. It's like they have like five different dudes that are there every time and they, mm -hmm. it just flows so natural. Like they just bounce ideas and it's just like conversation just flows. And before they know it, they've been talking for two, three hours uh -huh. and you feel like as a listener, you're like in the room, just like, yeah, green or like, what are they even talking about now? You, you know? start responding and stuff yeah. and yeah, that's yeah. the best part about it. I think, but yeah, dude, podcasts are where it's at, man. Yeah. They pass the traffic. Like, when I'd have to drive to Salt Lake, I don't even mind it sometimes. Like, if yeah. you get caught in traffic, it's like, oh, I'm just going to... Just flip it on. Yeah. So... Are you working in Salt Lake mostly now, or...? So, I'm doing? actually out at Cabela's right now as a maintenance tech. Cabela's. So, Cabela's, D.C., it's um by the Army Depot. Oh, just out here in Tula? Yeah. Okay. So, it's pretty cool. Yeah. But that's the one thing I've learned. Like, you bounce around so much. Like, I thought I'd, like, find a job and, like, chill at it and... Like, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. But you bounce around so much as an adult. Oh, yeah, dude. Like, when I was in school, when I, I I went to Slick, I was like, oh, yeah, like, I'll just find my one industry and stuff. And But you get into that industry and you're like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, mm -hmm. it's completely different than what I thought. Mm -hmm. Or you just find out there's, like, 
millions of different things that have to do with this industry and it's not just one set thing you know yeah so like i could go into construction and then end up being like some law person in construction you know it's so it's i don't know i think that's what makes it kind of exciting you just never mm -hmm. really know where you you could end up yeah you just got to get in where you fit in i guess serious but um you went to byu mm -hmm. i have one question for you <laughs> <laughs> think you already know but like you did you know anybody that was uh soaking out there um not ne <laughs> <laughs> like this is a dad podcast so you know we've yeah. already, we've been through it but soaking i mean i i guess so here's the thing is like at byu there is like there's like student athletes and we kind of just hung out with each other like uh -huh. It sounds weird, but like we didn't really hang out with main campus. Like uh -huh. there's just like, I don't know, it's just different kinds of people. And so those different kinds of people, for sure, I could see them soaking. <laughs> but as far as like I knew or like other, like some of the guys I knew, like they weren't really into that. Into that. I, it was all kind of just like a stigma or whatever. But yeah. Yeah, I never, I don't know. I never really participated in that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, to each his own. Yeah, for so. real. Like, if that's what you got to do. Uh, but, like, I, I always just wondered that because I was like, damn, like, is everybody out there just really just doing that? Like, I don't know how it's. I mean, from my <laughs> small circle, <laughs> we weren't doing that. But who knows, man? There's a lot of stuff you don't know is going around out there. So That's funny as hell, especially with, like, how busy you guys were you know yeah like you don't have time to hang around campus and everything yeah and it's like we had so many guys that were from like out of state and stuff and like like if they were gonna do something they would just do it they wouldn't even like uh -huh. go halfway you know <laughs> uh -huh. and that's kind of how i see it i'm like if you're gonna do that like might as well just go all the way in bro like, <laughs> might as well just fucking do just it send it dude like you're already in too deep uh-huh literally <laughs> <laughs> and so, literally balls so deep. just finish it off and go you know yeah, I don't know. that's funny so kind of going on that how was when you guys would have people from out of state come in how was their like culture shock to living out in provo uh were they culture shocked at all or yeah really? no definitely definitely culture shocked and i don't know i feel like they adapt like it was a, it was for the most part, it was like a good culture shock for them, mm -hmm. you know, because a lot of these guys, like they were just used to like partying or, you know, just having fun and going to college for fun. And BYU, yeah. like if you want to have fun, I wouldn't go to BYU. Uh -huh. Like if you if you want to get stuff done and like get a good degree and get a good education, go to BYU. Uh -huh. But if you're trying to have fun, man, go UVU <laughs> is right down the street. You know? Oh, yeah. So, but... I think a lot of these guys, like, they, they refocused. And obviously, like, there were parties and stuff or whatnot, like, small ones here and there. But I think it's, like, you see it kind of nowadays. Like, a lot of these bigger guys, it's like a good bounce back school where they can, like, refocus uh -huh. and kind of just make it to the league pretty much. Kind of hone back in. and mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool. That's, like, one thing I noticed because, like, I've never really been out there too much. But I went to a, I went to a Voss out there. I yeah. was like, damn, this is completely different from what I'm used to. Which one did you go to? <sighs> I think was it was it the, the Orm one. I, yeah, it was the, the Orm one. one. Uh-huh. Yeah. That like TVs in the <laughs> sauna. I'm like, this is so much nicer than I'm used to, bro. But like, it was weird because I walked in and like, I was the only one in there with tattoos and like, mm -hmm. you know, it was mm -hmm. like a completely different environment. Dude, it's so different out there. I mean, and it's funny you bring that up. It's like, that's like the dating central of Utah County is Orem Vasa. Really? Yeah. Everyone goes there just to chit chat and show show off for each other. <laughs> but like, yeah, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm over there like probably once, once a week just because I work out there and I go in the morning. But uh -huh. I mean, yeah, it's nice though. It's huge. It's definitely a nice Vasa. Like yeah. the weights are nice. Everything's nice. It's open. Yeah. Like More said, than one Smith machine. Yeah, for real. <laughs> That's the thing about the Twilla one. It's like there's two like squat racks. I'm like, and the ground's uneven and everything. I'm like, what the hell is I wonder this? Wonder like, why everybody's so upper body like strength and no <laughs> legs. I'm like, we got zero leg machines out here. Uh huh. But and then you go out there and there's like a whole like set like whole setup just for squat racks and like mm -hmm. 
I don't know, you have all the yoga moms out there and everything. Yeah, dude. But that's, yeah, I don't know. That's pretty crazy. Even just going to like eat there and stuff is kind of different. Yeah, I definitely say Utah County is like its own little bubble. Just mm-hmm. kind of like Tula is its own little bubble. Like you get just certain people like that kind of gravitate towards there. Uh huh. I don't know. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I that's... mean, I, I bet you my wife has a whole lot more to say about people <laughs> out there, but that's for another time i guess yeah so what's your wife up to did she go out to school out there or? so she so she went on her mission um after we graduated uh-huh came back and then she finished hair school over here at tool tech oh that's cool and then she got a job out there in utah county and just lived out there while i was playing football and then she eventually worked up to where she had rented out her own sweet dang yeah so she was definitely the breadwinner for while i was chilling in college but yeah so now ever since we've had the baby she hasn't really been able to do a lot of hair Uh uh-huh but yeah is she gonna look back into like getting back into it i think eventually she wants to it's just gonna be hard just having like kids and like our whole kind of end goal with this is we want to build a house to where we can have our own like salon suite in our basement where she doesn't have to worry about leaving our kids. Uh-huh. She can just have people come to her. So that's, that's cool. Kind of our end goal. That's cool. My wife has a cousin that does that. She does like nails out of a, like a little studio. Yeah. Other house and stuff. And I think that's cool as hell. Dude, in Utah County, bro, girls will pay bank for that stuff. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's so crazy. Like when she first told me, she's like, oh yeah, I'm paying like 180 bucks just to get their hair done. I'm like what <laughs> you know, I, I feel gypped paying twenty dollars for a haircut for real I, I go to the barber and pay 50 i'm like damn this is a lot of money yeah and my wife's like oh yeah i paid like two something for my hair or whatever i'm like what the? Yeah. yeah yeah so it's definitely like it's definitely a good industry i feel like and location is very important too so. for real would you want to go back out there or where would you guys want to build a house that's that's one thing me and my wife talk about a lot is like mm-hmm. where do we want to raise our family yeah like um so we've talked a lot about kind of like south jordan and Heron mm-hmm. areas where we want to kind of be just because it's like middle ground of all of our friends that we made out in utah county and then of course family's always going to be out here in stansbury mm-hmm. and so i feel like that area is like a really good area to raise a family from yeah. what i've seen but you know you never know 100 percent. yeah for sure but, it is like um me and my wife had an apartment out in west jordan and yeah. I freaking loved it out there. Yeah. Like you're by like the movie theaters, so much food places. <laughs> like you could do anything you want in an afternoon. Yes. Like she loved it. We were 10 minutes away from a target, like, mm-hmm. you know, and like targets right there. There's like a bar and grill down the street. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Dude, the- seriously. I mean, foods places, bro. That's what I miss the most, man. Like, I'm a foodie. I go to the gym so I could eat. <laughs> Serious, <laughs> you know? dude. Serious. And like out here, like I love Twilla, but we just need more options, bro. Uh-huh. Like you can only get chubby so much. <laughs> For real. Chubby's an American burger yeah, and Costa. You, and Yeah. And and then out there too, it's like things are open 24 hours too. Mm-hmm. It's like after 10 o'clock, you got Denny's. <laughs> McDonald's. McDonald's <laughs> and, you know, Rancheritos. Yeah. And so I, I definitely miss food out there, bro. And I mean, Utah County, like they always got all kinds of crazy people coming from out of state that are just posting up stuff there. And so like you can mm-hmm. try something new literally every day of the week if you wanted to. Yeah, I uh, I was a mobile technician for a company and I noticed that like I loved going to Utah County for jobs. Mm-hmm. I got to have like a whole little job route in Utah County for the day and stop at like different protein shacks that are always mm-hmm. popping up and like different food spots and like i that was my goal is to not go to a chain restaurant down there because everything's yeah. good you know yeah no for sure but that's the one thing i miss about like living in salt lake even you know it's like man there's so much going on and all the time and seriously i don't know is that is that kind of like your guys's end goal yeah back out there yeah for sure that's what's up. like we we got a house out here and i was like oh yeah like i want to i definitely want to raise a family out in Twila, like it, it'll be quieter and everything. It's like, oh, I don't know. Like I kind of miss the busy, like, like we were talking about, like I like yeah. being busy and having stuff to do. And right. like, I want my kid to always be busy. Not all like not be bored. You know, mm-hmm. like there's different, like training, like facilities you could take your kids out there. Like that's a big thing I've been yeah. thinking about different 
different food. So like at past 10, we're not eating McDonald's or Denny's, you know, like, mm -hmm. so I don't know, just, just stupid little stuff, but I've been or thinking about going to a Vasa that's open 24 hours, you know, if you had to, because mm -hmm. you, I mean, you probably know this more than anyone. It's not a hundred percent. You're going to be able to go to the gym every day. Yeah. You know, especially with kids and like yeah. coming home from work and your wife might have something going on and this and that. So it's mm -hmm. like, I don't know. That's a bit like I've been up for about 24, over 24 hours now <laughs> just cause you got to get it in where you fit in. You know, like yeah. I filmed a, a gym video at like five 30 this morning Dang, and like, dude. I don't know. You just always got to be going. So yeah. like having that gym open 24 hours would be nice, you know, yeah. or like, especially I want my kid to like come to the gym with me and like start doing little stuff here and there. So like having like we were talking about the equipment to like mm -hmm. you know 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 the importance of not skipping leg day. <laughs> yes, bro, hundred percent. You know, so like just having all that stuff out there for them. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like Salt Lake. A lot of those kids have a lot more of an advantage, like with those 100%. facilities. Hundred percent. Just just like the kids down south that are always doing stuff outside. Yeah, that's that's another thing I've thought about. I'm like, damn, should we go down to like St. George or something? Dude, St. George would be a dream, man. I think that's another place I could actually see us going to, if like Harriman doesn't work out. But yeah, no, I, I mean, when I was kind of helping coach, at least talking with my brother, I'm like, dude, the stuff I'm telling you, everybody in high school is doing it out there. Uh -huh. Like they all got their trainers telling them the exact same stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you can go ahead and like hang out and do whatever you want. But like, I'm telling you when it comes down to it, there are other guys working 10 times harder than you. Oh yeah. All the time. Mm -hmm. And that's just in Utah. <laughs> Think about bigger States, Texas, California, Florida. It's like Vegas, even like Vegas. Yeah. Like it's nonstop. If you want what you say you want, you got to show it and show up every day. Mm -hmm. So, I'm like half of it's that mentality. Cause like even my senior year, you knew me. I was like, I didn't go to all the camps. Like I, mm -hmm. I wish I would have like tried harder. Yeah, like I, sure. I tried in the games, but the off season, definitely. I didn't try, you know, well, me too, bro. If I would have known the importance of like an off season, not even like, it's not even that you have to just go balls to the walls all the time. It's just like being consistent, doing a consistent workout. And Mm -hmm. I mean, I learned this in college, but just working on your craft day by day by day and just gradually getting better. You yeah. Know? And so I feel like, man, if I would have, there's so many things. If I would have known in high school, bro, <laughs> I'm like, dude, I would have had scholarships out of the wazoo. But for real, I mean, it is what it is. And it happens for a reason. Yeah. And that, I, I guess that's one thing I want to like teach my kid is like, I think the biggest thing is consistency mm -hmm. just in life, just being consistent. Right. Like I didn't know the importance of it. Like, consistency at your job consistency at home consistency with your mood like mm -hmm. when you come home like if you're consistent in your mood and you're always like a good happy guy you know like shit flows if you come home all pissed off and this or that or mm -hmm. let the day affect you yeah you know like it's tough makes stuff tough yeah i know for sure i feel like i don't know, for me like i definitely have a lot of work to do with it but like just trying to disconnect work life from family home time. You know? mm -hmm. Like whatever it is I got to do, if I got to sit in my car for 20 minutes and just decompress mm -hmm. and just let it, whatever stresses were out from work, just be at work mm -hmm. and I can go and be a happier person, you know, with my family. And I think there's a lot of things I still probably have to learn about myself and whatnot in that aspect. But oh, for sure, you know, I think just doing that will be better. Like, just be a happier person. Yeah. So what's the, what's the one like your go to to decompress? Um, it's what? always been sports. Like, I don't know. There's something about just hitting someone. <laughs> I mean, I already miss it and I've only been out of it for like a year or two, but I mean, like we talked about just like the gym or I've really been getting into like basketball, pick up basketball a little bit more. I go and play uh -huh. with my brother and my dad and, I don't know. Just exercise has really been my scapegoat. Um, sometimes, you know, I'll play video games here and there and just decompress. But oh yeah, I don't know. You just got to find kind of what works for you. I don't know. What are your kind of some of your go tos? That, that's the same thing for me, pretty much. It's yeah. like the gym or like I'll just come home and like throw on a YouTube video and kind of just like not even pay attention, you know, mm -hmm. just let my wa mind wander for a good like 20 minutes. And then it's like, OK, I'm reset. Yeah. Like. You know, 
yeah ready for it but i know for sure i definitely want to try and like learn a lot a lot of new things like i don't know picking i've been playing a little bit of golf with my dad over the summer just picking up on new hobbies pickleball you know uh -huh. pickleball is always fun um yeah just just learning new things i think how are you on the golf course i, I love the i love golf <laughs> I'm crap, bro. Honestly, <laughs> I am. I probably barely learned how to swing like a year ago, and so I mean, I can, I can probably keep the ball on the course. Uh huh. Like, cause like, we never grew up playing golf in our family. <laughs> same, and, same. And so like, my dad picked it up maybe two or three years ago, and that's been his like getaway. And he kind of showed us, and we've just been playing a little bit here and there. And my wife is a great golfer. Oh, that's she's, cool. She's grown up. Like she has, she was one of those little girls with like the little Walker and would do those little tournaments with her brother. I'm like, dude, must be nice. <laughs> must be nice. Cause oh, now you're only, good. <laughs> if only that was my sport, bro, <laughs> I'd have two Achilles anyways. <laughs> for for but, real. But yeah, no, like golf. I mean, I'm all right. I think I could hold my own. Give me about like a month to adjust back into it. I oh, yeah. Be decent. Oh, yeah. That's how I am. It's always that first month is a little shock back into it. Oh, but relearning yeah. how to swing and get back into it. <sighs> yeah. But like that's the craziest thing because like you could be the craziest athlete and be total ass at golf. And oh, some yeah. dude that's not an athlete will walk you up and down the course, you know. Old guys. Yeah. Old guys over here just hit in and then just walk in like yeah it's definitely a humbling sport dude yeah because like i played with a couple old guys before and i'm like i watch them swing and it's just smooth like everything's just smooth and i'm trying to kill the ball and then yeah. i end up 20 yards out of bounds and they're in yeah. the middle so that's the biggest and, thing like and their ball don't go much more than 50 40 yards but that thing is straight every time oh yeah and i'm like geez that's another thing just consistency man consistency and like that's a mental sport you get you shoot it in the rough and you're like okay i'm gonna get it out of here and you try and overcompensate and you end up in the sand and like <laughs> end up in the water and then you're down two strokes and i found the bet when i play my best is when i don't even care uh-huh if i try and focus on my hinge or my arm or my path or my wife's in my ear telling me five different things I should be looking at. It's like, all right, this is going in the water every time. Uh huh. If I just step up there and swing before anyone starts looking, it's like usually good every time. So for real, yeah, it's definitely a mental sport. Yeah, and then one thing that I've I've kind of applied from the like learning in golf to life. It's like, man, when you end up in that rough, I take like a a safe shot back into play, and then like go from there and like lose just one stroke instead of trying to get it all back and ending up in the water. You uh, try and hit it and you end up two feet from where your ball was, you know? I just go for it, man. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's awesome. I just go for <laughs> it, man. Shoot. Just hand me whatever club I'm trying to hit through the trees, man. Hell yeah. But no, I should probably take your approach. We'll see. I could probably learn some things from you. Uh, maybe. I could I could probably learn some things for you. There's some times where I just need to go for it and I try and take the safe shot, but yeah, that's my dad's golf a lot of his life so i've been trying to keep up and learning that like chess match with like stroke playing like oh i could give up a stroke here or try this or i don't know how's your, your dad it has to be good oh yeah he's pretty good yeah he has a season pass and he's there almost every damn day you know yeah that's but, the life man that's, oh, yeah. that's the future man i'm trying to be a golfer that's what i'm trying to do is retire by 50 and then just golf and mm -hmm. hang that's out you know dude i want to travel where where do you want to travel like where do you want to take your family me and my wife, we want to go. So I'm Tongan, uh -huh. and we've already, we've talked about it a lot. Like we want to try and make it out there before my grandma passes with her, and just so she can kind of show us like how life was, and I don't know, just see it. It's a beautiful place. That'd be cool. So, so she's out there? No, she's out here. Okay. But I mean, she's got hookups for days, so like she'll travel wherever she wants to go. Uh huh. It's only a matter of when we are available, you know. And so I think. I think that's like a dream yeah. vacation for, for me and my wife. And it's beautiful out there. What do you want to go to the, like Tonga? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, as far as other places, I think, I don't know. It's, <laughs> I think Europe would be cool. 
Europe would be so sick. Like, that's my dream spot. Really? Mm -hmm. Like seeing the Colosseum. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's I that's know. the one I want to go see. The Roman I, Empire. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is, bro, but <laughs> something about just I don't know warfare and like the movie Three Hundred. You know, bro, seeing Greece and yeah, it's like that stuff is so sick every uh -huh. time. So I think that would be a cool spot for sure. Yeah, that's that's where I want to go. And like, there's the beaches there and everything, of course. Mm -hmm. And like, I see the little videos of like the kid like seeing the ocean for the first time as a baby and stuff. So I'm like, I want to get out there really still like young, yeah. and like, it's, I don't know. But I definitely want to go to Rome and check out the Roman Empire and yeah, shit. Dude. That'd be sick. I don't know. Like, are you into any like and Japan? I want to go to Japan, oh, really yeah. bad. I don't know. Well, like, what about Japan? So like. I've been in like karate like my whole life and stuff. And I was supposed to go out there and try and get like a black belt, but I I never went. I bought a car instead. Is that so like getting your black belt, like do you have is like do you have to like meet a certain person to do it? Yeah. Is that what it the is? The master oh, okay. pretty much. The okay. sensei. But yeah. like um yeah, it's the one I went through, he was he'd come to Utah every now and then. Mm -hmm. But when I was gonna go get it, I was should have went to Japan or should have kept training. Anyway, I want to go see Japan, like learning a lot about that fighting style and learning a lot about like their history and like yeah history that makes all of it. And like, I want to get into uh jujitsu and everything and like the different fighting styles. And then I was into wrestling. So you have a lot of that, like the Greece and like Roman, like wrestling. I don't know. Like just all the history of it's pretty sick. Dude, you're MMA fighter, man. You got the best Dude. of everything. <laughs> Have you ever thought about that? Like trying to do that? Yeah, but then I, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like some people are in it. Like I hear like even he's kind of toxic right now, but like Sean Strickland oh. talks about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like some people like that's their lives and like mm -hmm. that's how they escape life and survive what they've been through. Yeah. And like, I feel like. I feel like they would have that step up, you know, cause like mm -hmm. I have a family and other things going on and stuff. So I couldn't submerge myself into that. Mm -hmm. Like I've heard Mike Tyson, he's supposed to be fighting Jake Paul. I saw that yesterday. Yeah, I seen that. But, um, I heard him talk on Joe Rogan once and he's like, man, back in the day when he went into camp, he wouldn't have his family like anywhere near him. He'd be like mm -hmm. completely disattached from his family he'd like he studied all the roman like fighters and like emperors and everything and he had that like old roman like kind of mentality yeah where he's like i want i just if i want sex i want it like like i don't know like yeah. that old style you know not mm -hmm. like family stuff so i don't think i could ever do it like that yeah you definitely you definitely have to be a little off the rails in your thinking yeah. to be crazy enough to go in there and try and beat each other up you know oh for sure even football it takes a level of craziness you know mm -hmm. to get in the ring but no i don't know i thought i'd just ask because i'm like dang he's got all these tools man we might as well just get in the ring but no that ma that makes sense yeah like because i've thought about it and it's like i don't know if i got that on him you know mm -hmm. like maybe before i started a family and stuff i could get into that mental state because you don't have to be away or you could be away from your family because you don't have little ones and stuff and mm -hmm. bills to pay and stuff like that yeah so maybe earlier i i'd love to hey man one ufc win though dude dude for real <laughs> <laughs> i would love it like uh sugar sean and everything like mm -hmm. i don't know he's kind of showing that like I don't, I don't know even in even if you lose man you're still getting the bag yeah erla uh, adesanya israel adesanya oh yeah he's like he was talking like he was working as like at a county for like the water department one day he's like i'm gonna fight like yeah. you could be whoever you want to be in this life mm -hmm. so he just started fighting and built his way up just like yeah, that look at him now dude but no like i think fighting styles and stuff is a good thing to know especially mm -hmm. if you want to be a protector and stuff like yeah just having that in your back pocket mm -hmm. a little bit of knowledge or knowing how to throw a punch because a lot of people don't know how to throw a punch out there you know seriously seriously have you ever thought about getting that into any like fighting styles or um, fighting disciplines since you got out of football? So funny enough, one of my roommates, um, we had this little, we call her a little yellow house, trap house out there <laughs> in Provo um, before I was married. But um, so he, his dad was a boxer, a oh, boxer. And so, I mean. <laughs> I bet that dude was scary. 
dude, he's just some OG <laughs> old dude, and you would you would never guess, but they he knew how to punch. And my my buddy, he was on the team, and he's from California. But so like during COVID, we were still in that house, and like a lot of stuff was unsure at that time, and so. We like obviously we wanted to stay in shape just in case we saw the season. Uh-huh. And so I remember his dad would come over every weekend or like every two other two days and just be doing boxing workouts, bro. Dude, boxing workouts are crazy. Oh my gosh. I never wanted to kill myself. You know, <laughs> more than when I was doing boxing workouts. And like he'd always have us on these little circuits. So like you're either jump roping or you're over here sparring with him or you're doing, you know, ab workout or shoulder something Uh and we'd go for like 10 12 rounds Uh uh-huh and so like i think boxing is something that i would probably enjoy i've thought about getting into that this last year actually finding a gym in salt lake and getting into boxing because like i got that karate background some wrestling and boxing is different dude yeah like i've i've tried to like mess around and like not like street fight but like put on gloves and like fight a a boxer mm-hmm. dude they their movement is crazy. crazy like it's a whole crazy different thing yeah and i don't know my friend he's like he's like a he was our d line a dn mm-hmm. he's like 260 pounds but i'm like dude if i would not mess with you like <laughs> you are a deadly because per- he's been training with his dad ever since he was young uh-huh. and then he actually stopped football to be a boxer really so he's actually a a boxer right now like a amateur fighter right now oh that's cool as hell but yeah I mean, boxing, I, I don't know. I I had a hard time with it because I have bad shoulders, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know what it is with my shoulders. I'm pretty sure I have a torn labrum, but uh-huh. who knows? But, yeah, boxing is crazy. Dude, and, like, being, like, playing football and stuff, you're like, oh, like, can't be that hard. Around five minutes in the professional mm-hmm. level. Like, mm-hmm. a lot of the amateurs are, like, two and a half or three-minute rounds. It's like, oh, come on. Like, you could do that. Yeah. But then you actually – even just sparring for three minutes, getting that adrenaline and dopamine hit, yeah. like you go through energy so fast. Bro, even just holding your hands up like this for that amount of time, you get tired. Uh huh. And then you get hit once and kind of get shook, and you're like, yeah. "Holy shit!" Yeah, yeah. So That's, I mean, I definitely gained appreciation for that sport. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's pretty cool, dude. Yeah. You think you're gonna try and find a gym sometime soon? Uh, maybe not time, sometime soon out here. Maybe like when we move, mm-hmm. there's more, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure there's not really much out here, mm-hmm. but I mean, I'd like to at least dabble in a little bit. You oh, know? for sure. I'm always keen to learning new things. That's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. And like, you're a collegiate athlete, obviously. Like, I feel like you could pick it up pretty cool, co- pretty quick. Like, yeah. I don't know. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> yeah. But, um, anyway. Thank you for coming on the podcast. Yeah, bro. I don't know how much time you got left, but no, thanks for having me, bro. I mean, it's been it's been awesome. I obviously, I mean, we kind of I don't know if you know this, we go way back. Yeah. Um I mean, I lived in Stansbury a long time ago and I was honestly going to play. I know a lot of guys wide up with your little league gremlin team with your dad. Oh yeah. And I know your dad was over there recruiting me. Oh yeah. And so, but then we ended up moving, but I just know you guys from a long time ago and obviously I went to school with your younger brother. Mm-hmm. You know, so, but it's, it's cool, bro. I like what you're doing and I mean, you're putting on for, for Stansberry, dude. Thank you. I appreciate it. And like, that was like one of the biggest things was having a baby. It's like we went to high school and you lose touch with so many people. Mm-hmm. It's like, I want to reach back out and like talk to people, I guess, you know, yeah, bro. cause everybody goes mm-hmm. down like so many different avenues in life. Mm-hmm. especially right out of high school. So it's, it's kind of cool to reconnect and, and see where stuff is going. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then like maybe go hit a workout here and there and the, yeah, I don't know. So yeah, bro, just let me know, man. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate it. But, um, subscribe. We'll be back next week. Um, peace. Peace.